everybody. I'm sorry that the camera is swingy. I have I have it mounted on my tripod upside down hanging from an overhead shelf. <laughs> Cause I ain't got no money for any kind of cool rig, so I'm using what I got. So I'm working on um large tinkered forms today. Um so, you know, Michigan mugs, morale mugs, tractor mugs. We'll see what else I come up with um, this year. But, oh heck, I need to get this turned on and get this wet. Um, it has been a long fall and winter for me so far. Um, I came down with pneumonia in October, um, right around the time of Apple Festival, and it didn't go away with the antibiotics. Um, I mean, I started feeling better some, and the x-ray did show improvement, but I still get short of breath, I still get dizzy a little bit of the time, my lungs still hurt some of the time, and we kind of suspect that I might be, um, I might have developed an allergy to my birds, so, which sucks because they're my babies and I don't really want to get rid of them, but, um, I do have a friend that has offered to watch them for me for a couple of weeks to see if I improve, so I may do that because, um, I mean, I, I have homes lined up for the ones that I'm particularly concerned about, um, but I don't want to do that. But I also want to be able to work, so, um, yeah, being able to breathe is a good thing. Um, being able to carry things back and forth from my van without having to, you know, sit down and take a breather after five minutes is, is a good thing, so, so I'll do what I gotta do, but anyway, so anyway, we're working on these large tanker forms, because I am all, I am pretty much out of just about everything, um, I have very few pieces of any one particular glaze or design so I'm just kind of making and making and seeing which wholesale orders I can fill as I go and hopefully the people that ordered them haven't given up on me because um, cause along with the, uh, the um, pneumonia came lots and lots of depression because financial instability will do that to you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah. Very low on money. Very low on energy. Very low on any kind of will to communicate with people. <laughs> uh, so. So I'm working on getting better. Working on getting stuff done. Trying to, you know, make a dent in everything. Trying to get by. Okay, so I've got my pound and a half of clay all opened up and um, and recentered. And I'm gonna slow my wheel down here, and I think I can do another like slow pull. I I don't know that I'd call this like a first pull because it's not really. It's just kind of like an elongation. So I'm just taking my thumb and and moving it up. It's kind of like it's a pinch with one hand more than a lifting with the two hands. So as my friend Steven says, you gotta give it that kung fu grip. <laughs> and so it's it's more like a, a, a moving up like that than anything. Alright, so we got that nice and thinned out and up a little ways and so um I pull it out I pull it out so that the inside diameter of the of the bottom is about what I want it to be 
And so then I'm just going to work on pushing in um, right at the very base here. I don't leave a lip of any sort and um, I don't tend to use tools other than my thumbnail. Um, I've had to learn how to reconstruct thumbnails because <laughs> I'll wear it down so much. But it just, it works so good for me that I just, that's, that's what I use. So I'm pushing right here at the base with my thumbnail and I do have my hand inside there to stabilize it. And so that gives me that little lip down there. And I'm going to slow this down a little bit more. So then I can just lift that up. And it is, for me, I think it's more of a a squishing in than a, than like a raising a ridge, really. I'm, okay. So, and that's, you know, more or less cylindrical. I'm just going to collar it in because I seem to do better if I just keep going skinnier. So, pushing in again, that's narrowing that base, but also thinning it, so um, it's still just approaching that inner diameter there. And pulling up. So I'm not worrying too much about the, you know, the finished shape of the piece until I reach the height and diameter that I'm after. So... And I keep my height, I, I've shown you guys this before, but I'll show you again. I keep my height and diameter on my stick here. So, I'll put that up there and we're definitely not tall enough. So, I'll give it another pull, which means another push in with the thumbnail at the base. getting a little sticky on me lately and I think it's just because my hands have been dry. I don't know. I could be wrong. Definitely been throwing with a lot less water lately. So that's been kind of heartening. Though I also know plenty of potters that have been doing this for years and still use plenty of water so I'm not too terribly worried. Alright, let's give this a shot. It still needs to go taller. Which I should know because I can actually reach my thumb or reach my hand with my thumb without having to stretch. So, that'd be another good way to measure without having to have a stick, I suppose. It's just how far up you can reach. Because when these are tall enough, I really can't. I couldn't, um, like, touch my. I can't have my. The, the, this part of my hand over the top. I can't reach the bottom that way. All right, let's see. There we go. I'm actually a little bit over height, which is fine. And my rim diameter is about a quarter inch, well, it's about half inch smaller than what I've got on here. Because I'm going to be putting that lip on the, on the top. So, you know, I have it a quarter inch in on each side. And that actually does pretty well because I push in more than I push out. Um, okay, so I've got that at about the right height, the right diameter, and approximately the right shape. And see, what I'm looking for is I don't want it to be too bulbous at the bottom. I want it to have that nice, um, gentle curve. Um, and then we'll see how it looks once I put the lip out, and I might reshape after that. Okay, so for the lip, I am pressing my thumb about an inch, inch and a quarter from the top, pushing in while I support on the inside with my index finger. And I'm not really pushing out, I'm just pushing in with my thumb. Oh, and we got all wobbly here. What the heck? This is what I get for trying to talk and work at the same time. And now I'm going to give that a curve, and I try to get this top lip at least the same diameter as this bottom ridge, if not a little bit more, because that top lip does shrink in more than the lower ridge does. 
so so I got that all set and now I'm going to take my little wooden knife here and I'm just gonna give this a quick trim here let me see if I can show you I'm trimming like this I'm just giving you a little bit of a you know an undercut with that curve there and then another little bevel um, Okay, so I've got that curve that I'm working with, and so that, that gives it that little bit of lift that you'd normally get with a, um, with a foot, but I don't, I don't like doing feet. I do an indented bottom rather than spending a bunch of time trimming mugs. So I've got that, that little bit of lift, and so now I'm going to make it so that, so that right about here is the belly. Um, we don't want it up too high. Cause that makes it more like a barrel shape. I don't want barrel shape and we don't want it too low cause that makes it look like it's got a fat butt and it's really funny looking. So we're gonna, we're gonna make our belly here and then you see how it's all kind of plumped out right here. We're gonna give it a, a much slenderer shoulder there so that it blends right in with the neck. We don't want it to have shoulders at all. We want it to just blend right in so that it's not too skinny. We don't want a sickly looking mug. We want it to have a nice healthy little belly down there. But no shoulders and a nice, nice strong neck to go with that rim. And I think that is just about perfect um, because our, our handle will come out just a little bit that way and then come straight down and you'll be able to grab it really nice. Um, and that'll easily hold any kind of medallion that I decide to put on it. And because I've made the rim wide enough and I've made the base wide enough and I've given it that nice belly to it, it will hold a lot more than you would think it does. So these will hold about 20 ounces. Um, and you know, if I made it a little taller or a little wider, it would hold more, but 20 ounces works pretty well for most people. If you are a large latte person like I am, that's what you want to shoot for. Or, you know, mug club. At a bar, 20 ounce pour is pretty standard for a pint. So there we are. There's our profile for that form, which I think looks quite nice. So I'll just throw a few more of those. And then I'll stop boring you and turn off the, <laughs> turn off the, uh, the video. I think it's just fun to watch people throw. It's one of those things that I've always enjoyed. Watched my first um, professional potter throwing when I was four years old at Old Sturbridge Village when my parents took me and my little brother out to Pennsylvania for, the, for a summer vacation. So that kind of stuff has just always fascinated me. Honestly, any kind of handwork has always fascinated me. I see people doing stuff and I'm like, oh, I want to try that. I bet I could do that. So, and funnily enough, this is the one that was like, it didn't come. I couldn't just do it like most other things. This one I actually had to work at and, you know, practice and suck for a long time. <laughs> It probably didn't help that my first um, throwing experience was, you know, in high school in the back of the, the art room where we had one kick wheel that nobody liked to clean and <laughs> and we didn't have an instructor that was particularly good at throwing pottery, so but she's seen my work now and she's particularly, she's rather proud of me, so that's kind of nice. <laughs>
So yeah, once I tried that and, and it didn't, it wasn't easy. So I was like, I guess I'll slab build. So my mom still has a few of my slab build pieces. I think my oldest son Ian's got one too. I found out I was expecting him around the same time that I was taking that class my senior year. So he's got one with his name on it. Yeah. I think Mom sent me home with a bowl or two that I had thrown too, which was hilarious because, you know, the bottom of the, you know, the, 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 the side wall at the very bottom is at least an inch thick, you know? <laughs> uh, it kind of makes me feel good that I can actually, you know, make decent things now. And, um, I, I told people, I, I started calling myself a potter once I could get the clay to do what I wanted, not what it wanted. <laughs> Before that, I was a rank beginner playing with clay. Okay. I wish I could show you the little spiral. You know how I, I pull out with my ball opener, but then once I get it out to the diameter that I want, I give it a push, a nice um, smooth push back to the center, and that makes a nice spiral in the bottom. And I don't really touch that. The only thing that touches that spiral is the sponge at the end, and it really doesn't alter it much, so I get a nice spiral in the bottom just from using that tool, which I think is cool, because I like using that tool. It makes things so much faster and, and just more, more reliable. I hate it when I, you know, cut a piece off of the bat and, and realize, oh crap, I, I uh, open that too deep and now my bottom's too thin and now I'm going to have to keep an eye on it and it's probably going to crack and it's just no fun. And I never have to worry about that when I use my opening tool, which you can find um, a video on how to make them on YouTube. That's where I found it. And the guy does call it a, you know, a, a ball opener, which I think is, it sounds really funny. But <laughs> That's what he calls it. Yeah. Right. Boy. Sometimes I can get these things pulled up and like couple of good pulls and sometimes like the last one it takes me four freaking ever. But that's alright. Like I said, I'm just getting back in the swing. I haven't done much of I did one wholesale order um between October and now. And that was, you know, twenty-four mugs. It was not a lot, and I felt pitiful and pathetic, and so I'm still just kind of getting back into the swing of things here. But I think I'm doing all right for that. Last night I was putting handles and stamps on a batch of mugs, and I was so in the groove that I was like not even remembering doing all of the bottom work and <laughs> having to pick them up and look at the bottom and make sure I had indented and put the clay coat on them and all that fun stuff. Not quite So that's always fun when you when you get so in the zone that you just you're just doing stuff on autopilot and it's working. One of my dear online friends, Miss Morwenna, if you're watching, she once told me about when she um, fell asleep knitting one day. And she had been doing so much knitting because that was how she was making her extra money at the time. Um, that she fell asleep 
in her chair and kept knitting. <laughs> and it wasn't a super simple pattern either. She had to do needle changes and, you know, increases and decreases and all kinds of stuff. She didn't slip up at all. She kept going <laughs> and still did a perfect job of it. And I just think that is hilarious. Because, I mean, I can knit without looking, but I don't think I can knit while sleeping. Ugh. Okay. Perfect. That's what I've been wasting my time on when I'm, uh, when, when I've been sick is I've been doing, um, some fiber arts experimenting. Um, I don't know if you saw my last video that I had posted on how to, how to make plastic yarn out of, um, plastic grocery bags. Um, so that's what I've been doing. I've been making mats for my bird room and, um, and then I, I uh, discovered that, um, you can do, um, a type of crochet called Tunisian crochet in the round, which was previously thought to be impossible, but you have to use a double-ended hook and two balls of yarn. And so I was like, whoa, well, if I use, if I use the plastic yarn for one of the yarns and I use regular yarn for the other one of the yarns, would I get just plastic on the outside and yarn on the inside? And so I tried it and sure enough, it worked. So I made a pair of mittens and it turned out so good and they work great. They're wonderful snowball mittens. The snow doesn't stick to them at all. And they're not particularly warm. So I think I'm going to try with wool the next time. Just to see if that makes a difference. That's something that I do love. I don't particularly like prototyping, but I do like experimenting to see what gets me the best thing that I'm after. What's going to give me the best product for the least amount of work um, and the least amount of difficulty. So, doing the Tunisian crochet was, was one of those neat things where I got to learn a new technique and come up with something particularly useful for me. Alright, how's that look? That looks pretty good. We got our nice little belly there. It's nice and fat, but not too fat. Alright, looks good. production, but yeah, what do you do? I am a very small person. You can only do so much.
still feel like I struggle with centering sometimes. But then I think back to how things used to be and I'm realizing that it is so much easier. And that I feel like I'm it's easier for me to correct if I don't center if I don't center well right at the beginning I can often get it corrected so that I'm still getting a decently centered piece at the end which I think is weird because I didn't think that was even possible but I guess it is it's, I manage I don't bother compressing. Um, I haven't really needed it. I, I've discovered that I get, I get cracks more based on, you know, the batch of clay that I've been using than anything else. You know, I can do everything completely the same um, as far as, you know, throwing, dry time, drying conditions, and clay from one batch from Runyon will just be all entirely cracked on the bottom and then the stuff from another box will be perfect so thankfully I've only had that happen a few times it was just one particular batch of buff clay I'm not sure what the deal was but boy oh boy it did not like me So I use that, <laughs> that batch of bowls that I, that I made out of that clay. Um, those get used to hold my, um, you know, um, buttons and medallions and stuff in between this firing and glazing. And then once I get everything all glazed and fired, then I... I just use them as holders for, for the small things. And I can even just put them into the kiln loaded up with the medallions and bisque fire with, you know, just with everything in the bowl, which makes things so much faster when it comes to loading up a kiln to just be able to throw five bowls in on a shelf and call it good. camera so I hope I'm not like blocking views and all that fun stuff. It's hard to get a good camera angle when you're working on something like this and don't have anybody around to actually take the videos. I'd say someday Kurt will retire and he can do that, but he's only like 38, so it's going to be a lot. <laughs> he still has the other half of his life to live. If I notice that it's starting to get way too fat at the bottom, I can usually skinny it down with with the next pull pretty easily. I just pull straight up rather than letting it flare out. Um, Alright, oh yeah, that is perfect. With 
pretty good. I'm just gonna compress the rim a little bit because it's just a little bit tall and that, that actually does give a little bit of strength to that rim there. And with my thumb, stable with my left hand. That and I don't, if you, if you notice, it's not a super pronounced curve here. You just want it so that your bottom lip is going to rest in there. Because um, you don't want, you don't want a huge flare out at the top either because um, that will contribute to drips. You don't want your mug dripping, your special, or dribbling down your front. So... You know, flare it out some, but not a ton. And so, and I, you know, just using my index finger seems to work quite well for that. All right. Get the water out of here. stupid faces. I always make stupid faces when I work. It's the most entertaining part about me. <laughs> I've been really pleased with how well balanced my forms have been looking lately. Um, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's one of those things that has always been a goal for me, right from the very start, is working toward uniformity. So, when I can get uniformity, not just in height and diameter, but in shape too, oh, it's just so pleasing. <laughs> and to have them all um, you know, cut off the bat and laid out on a board together in nice straight rows, and they all look so uniform. It makes me so happy. Okay. Well, shall we do one more? May as well, I suppose. You can always stop watching now if you're sick of me. You see me going over there, it's me drying off my hands. Because if I get the clay out with soaping wet hands, then it gets all squishy on the outside and doesn't want to stick to the bat. So always wipe off your hands in between. Or not, if you're talented and don't need to do that.
getting pretty caked up with clay. It was getting a little sticky, so I had to lift up and place down in a different spot. It was a little bit more lubricated. There we are. And I can just squish it in. Because honestly, it doesn't need to be that wide. I might actually be able to get this bag all thrown before I have to go up and put Brady's to bed. That would be nice. Because tonight is trivia night at Beards. And I let my team down at the end of last... <laughs> of the last season because I was sick. But I am feeling a whole lot better now started doing karaoke again which has been fun my kids got me into doing that but um last winter they got me started doing that and oh my gosh because I did a lot of singing when I was in in high school and younger um, did a lot of singing in church as a, as a little kid and young teenager then did performing arts and I always did musicals and performing arts So I get to sing all of those cool songs that I loved as a teen and young adult and and then even now. It's just been a lot of fun. DJs are a lot of fun to work with. Um, I think they enjoy a challenge of finding a song that people don't particularly um, know very well and a good time. Um, a couple Fridays ago Ian told me, Mom, I'm gonna try out a couple of Jane's Addiction songs. I'm like, oh? I didn't think they had much of anything other than Jane says and been caught stealing. Because I found a whole bunch of other ones. I'm gonna try Mountain Song and stop and oh, I love the I love Mountain Song for, you know, First of all, and then for for him, it was just the perfect selection. He his range was just perfect for it. He hit everything just on point. It sounded fantastic. I was so thrilled. So yeah, I'm one of those embarrassing moms that goes and stands in front of the stage and yells and screams and stuff. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they care in the slightest either, I think. We're all a bit weird like that, so. I'll get up there and sing, and you know, one of the kids will be in the back of the bar, and they'll yell, That's my mom! <laughs> what 
Whoops, I'll do the same thing to them. That's my kid. Yeah. So, the, the surprising one that I tried last time I sang, it's one that I've wanted to try for a long time, but I never really, I didn't really know if I could, because um, it was Firewoman by the Cult. And, I mean, Ian Astor is a baritone, like, you know, like Jim Morrison's a baritone. And I'm, my voice is not particularly low. Like, I, I tend to struggle singing, um, you know, Pearl Jam songs and stuff. So I thought, well, I'll give it a try, because I really like that song. And it's kind of cemented in my head. It's weird. There's so many songs that I learned in, like, middle school and high school that they will not leave my head. I can have not heard them for years and years and years and still get up and just sing them, which I thought was pretty cool. It doesn't happen all the time. But anyway, I tried Firewoman and other than the, the rather quiet and distant uh, Firewoman call at the very, very beginning of the song. I pretty much nailed the whole damn thing, and I was astounded. I was also very, very breathless at the end because it's over six minutes long. <laughs> and I didn't realize it, and it's pretty much full tilt the whole way through. There's only one solo break in the whole song. So yeah, that was a blast, and I am totally going to do that one again, because I felt like a badass. That's all there is to it. Alright, make sure that's all cleaned out, and this is all dried up. And of course I splashed water inside. So well, there we are. We through the four large tankard forms, and hopefully I'll get the last seven of these all through, and then we'll take care of my birdies for the night. Thank you for hanging out with me while I was throwing, and hopefully you learned something. Um, if not, hope you enjoyed watching, and I will see you next time. Thank you so much.